in the last stream, we began the new mod pack, Feed the Factory. We placed down three of these entry level burner drills. We have one here that between streams has been mining out iron and coal. We have one all the way over in the distance there. This one is mining diamonds and redstone. And more importantly, it's also uh, transferring all of its items back to us via this minecart that we set up right at the end of the last stream using these cart hoppers from Signals. And of course, we also have one more over in the distance behind that tree there that is mining copper. And between streams, I have mostly just let these go for a little while, and I have been smelting a little bit more copper and iron. I think we also have yet more copper in here. We do indeed. And I did go ahead and put a little bit of both iron and a redstone into our alloy kilns here to get us even more modularium because I think one of the very first things that we're probably going to want to do at the start of today's episode is get a couple more of these burner researchers, not only so that we can complete this quest right here, if we make eight more of them, then we get uh, an extra four in return, but also to allow us to start completing research much faster and just unlocking more stuff. So to make these eight multi-block capsules, we just need a bunch more machine casing. Again, we're going to need uh, 64 in total. And for that, we need a bunch of modularium with a bunch of copper. Thankfully, we have all of that. And so if we were to go ahead and do something like this, that is gonna get us 32. And in fact, it looks like we're still not quite going to have enough modularium here. We're very close, but that is still not enough to make the eight required. It's one shy, which, is a little bit awkward. We need just a little bit more. That is completely fine, actually. Let's put some more iron and some more redstone in here. We'll also put some more iron and a little bit more redstone in our second alloy kiln as well. I might look at making a few more of these alloy kilns along with a few more of these burner researchers because, again, they're just very, very slow, and I could do with getting stuff like modularium just that little bit faster. While we wait for that to process though, one thing that I do want to get right at the start of today's episode is a sickle. The sickle here is fairly easy to make and it's just going to allow us to easily clear out a lot of this tall grass that surrounds us. Normally we'd have to break every single block, which is not particularly slow, but the sickle does make it just that little bit faster. And one of the most important factors for me at least, we don't have to listen to this horrible grass breaking sound over and over and over again. And as we build out more machines and expand, having all this space here is definitely going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. Also between streams, one thing that I have done is uh, I've locked the minimap in the top right hand corner there. So now it no longer spins when we move around. The way that you do that is you press Y, which is the default key for the minimap settings and then view settings, and then you can lock it north. If you don't lock it north, it spins in the top corner, which I find a little distracting. If you do lock it north, it stays, and then just the arrow for the player head moves, which I think is a lot more useful, especially because the seismic reader here is also oriented north by default. As we saw last episode, it doesn't move depending on where you're facing. And so uh, you can see here we have trees on the bottom and trees on the top. And if we look at the minimap, we can uh, zoom out a little bit here and you can see the exact same setup where there are trees on the left and then uh, more trees on the top there. So it's just a little bit easier for us to orient where we are in relation to the seismic reader. Either way, let us take a look. How much modularium do we have? I think that is going to be almost certainly enough to get us the final multi-block capsule. We just need two, four, six, eight of these. And then if we do something like this, we get our capsules, which in turn gets us even more capsules. And of course, if we want to turn those into burner researcher capsules, we need more iron sheet metal and furnaces. Again, none of that is gonna be particularly difficult. We can do something like this to get a bunch of iron plates. We can then craft those iron plates into iron sheet metal. I think 33 should be enough. That's gonna get us 11 of the burner researchers. And then in terms of furnaces, of course, it is just a bunch of cobblestone. And if we don't have enough cobblestone, which we do not, we can of course, once again, just take our iron hammer, head back down into our little makeshift mine here and just do a tiny bit of hammer mining until we have a couple of stacks of cobblestone. I do think that I'm also going to try prioritize the mining of marble as well, because I think we can do some pretty cool base designs using the marble, especially using the chisel mod. Back on the surface, boom and boom, that should be enough to make a couple of these one use burner researcher capsules. They do not stack, which is a little bit awkward, but 
that is completely fine because we can just go ahead and uh, place these down. Okay, so I've placed down the first machine here, but if you left click with the capsule in your hand, it will rotate it. So you'll see in the chat here, it goes to 90, then 180, then 270, and then zero. So 90 degrees is it turns sideways like this. And then if you go to 180, it's flipped completely. I didn't mean to put that down. There is a quest in here, I think, about picking these back up. Yes, right here it says, this blue capsule is for moving already built burner researchers craft one use capsule to create a new one. So we did get given one of these as a reward. Left click charge from inventory, right click undo last deploy. So if I just right click that, can't undeploy. Oh, I see. The way this works is we just tear down the multi-block structure here, which thankfully isn't too many pieces. And then all we do from there is we can use this capsule here, this blueprint, to then replace it down. So here you'll see it says left click to charge your inventory. So if we left click, it's gonna take all of those items that we just picked up, and then now we can replace those all down. So we kind of just pull the items from our inventory into the blueprint, and then we can uh, place them back down how we want them. The reason I'm doing this is that I think what I probably want to do here is place them down like this. And I'm gonna change the first two as well. The reason for that is that it just gives us more space on this side of the multi-block, which is where all of the inputs go. Because if we're going to try and automate the insertion of these items, I think having space on this side of the tiny inputs is gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier, especially when we're working with, you know, rails and conveyor belts. All right, so I've placed down all of these burner researchers. Those are all now ready to go. And so we should now be able to start filling all of those up and getting all of them to work. So I'll take some coal here. We then also, if we're going to get even more tier one research, of course, need to get ourselves some more conveyor belts and some more iron plates. So I think what we will probably do here, we need so much more of everything. And are we completely out of iron? There might be some in here that is indeed. I'll take all of the iron that I can get here because although I would like to get more research going, I think before I start spending all of my iron making iron plates and spending all of my copper and iron making conveyor belts, I think it might be a better idea to look at automating the burner drill so that they always have fuel inside of them and also looking to see if we can't automate these furnaces as well so that all of the iron and ideally all of the copper get smelted automatically without us having to continually pull the iron and copper manually from their respective chests and smelt them into their respective ingots. And so real quick, I will manually craft eight of these into a stack of tiny coal. We'll drop that back in there just to get this back online again. But I think what I am gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and again, utilize our minecart system to automate the smelting of these resources. My idea here is to take these furnaces. We've got four of them here. I'll make a few more. The more furnaces we have, the faster the smelting is gonna be, of course. And so my thought process here for the system I want to set up is that I want to have, let's say five furnaces down like this. I'm then going to run some Minecraft rail underneath these furnaces like this. And we're gonna kind of have this go in a loop. Let me make more rail real quick here because again, having more of that is gonna make my life just a little bit easier. There we go, we'll take 32 more. And so over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have something that looks a little bit like this. And I'm gonna make it one shorter so that it's symmetrical on this side, like this. But my idea here is to have a minecart with hopper, which is a little bit different to the one we currently have. But the minecart with hopper here is going to go around this track continually. And every time that it goes underneath a furnace, if there is any ingot in the output slot, it will pull it down into the minecart. And so we can have that one minecart collect all of the resources smelted by all of these furnaces. And so then we're gonna have the minecart go around and somewhere around here, maybe smack bang in the middle, we will have a powered rail. And just like we're doing over here with our diamond and redstone cart, we're gonna put another cart hopper beneath that powered rail to pull all of the ingots out. So all of the ingots are going to end up in a chest underneath this powered rail. Now, what we're also going to do here is on top of the furnaces, we're gonna have yet another rail. So we're gonna have kind of two looping rails, one 
on top of another. And uh, I will replace the cobblestone here with something that looks a little bit nicer. But just as a proof of concept, my thought process is to have another system that runs around like this. This time, though, what we're probably going to have to do, actually, is maybe move this up by one. Because this time, we're going to have to have just a minecart with chest and then place hoppers above these chests. So these here will be hoppers. Uh, these here will be hoppers. These won't, of course. And all of these will just be regular rail. So we're going to have rail that goes around like this. And the idea with this one is that we're going to have all of our ores from our miners pumped up and pumped into a minecart with chest. That minecart with chest is going to loop around. And the benefit of using a minecart with chest here is that the minecart with chest is only going to go over the hopper for a very short period of time. And in that time, the hopper is only going to be able to pull one or two ores from that chest down into the furnace. And so doing it this way allows us to evenly distribute all of our iron, all of our copper amongst all of these furnaces, which in turn is going to make the smelting that much faster. My final thought process here is then to have yet another rail, a third rail that is going to go into hoppers on the side so that we can distribute the coal that we're going to get amongst the furnaces as well. And it's going to use the same principle where because the cart only goes over the hoppers for a brief period of time, it's going to fairly evenly distribute all of the coal that we have amongst those three furnaces. So to make any of this work, we are going to need probably a significantly larger amount of iron than we currently have. And so I am going to go ahead and quickly start smelting up a lot more iron here and we'll also take of course a lot of this uh, tiny coal and get that in to get all of this smelting because uh, all of the hoppers and all of the minecarts required are going to need substantially more than the 31 iron that we currently have the uh, 10 hoppers alone are going to take about 50 iron and so we are going to need to smelt up quite a bit of this the good news is that uh, of course we can make really as many furnaces as we like and we can definitely look at smelting this iron substantially faster than we currently are all right so a little while later we now have a bunch more iron smelted up and i have also done a little bit of deforestation to get us some more oak wood as well and so i think we should have what it takes here to get this up and running so first thing first i am going to go ahead and craft up some more chests and a quick tip here, you can craft eight oak logs in this pack to get uh, four chests, which is uh, kind of handy. Uh, you might also be able to do this. You totally can, actually. So you don't even need to craft the chests. You can just craft the logs with the iron, and that does make the hoppers. I'm going to take five of these for now because I'm more interested in getting the ores automatically sent to the right place currently than I am getting the uh, fuel there because the fuel I do kind of want to craft into tiny coal first and to do that is going to require a bit more uh, progress along the main quest line so for now what we're going to do is we're going to put down all of these hoppers and then we're going to place rail along the top of these hoppers like so and then on this side we do need to get yet another one of these powered rails because we're basically going to do the same thing where we have all of our ores sent to a chest that is above one of the fast hoppers from signal and then we're going to use that fast hopper to turn on the powered rail and have everything begin moving and so if we want to get a second powered rail again thankfully nice and easy for us to do and then all we're going to need now is at least two more of these cart hoppers and for that we just need two more regular hoppers easy enough one and two along with two more block signals which we made in the last stream and so now we can place one of those down under here like so and if i'm not mistaken one of the things that the signal mod adds is the ability to swap out a rail in place so i did pick this up but i think you can actually just right click the rail you totally can that is pretty nifty makes our lives just a little bit easier and so we're going to put the other hopper right about here and then we'll have a chest above this cart hopper and I'll put it down facing this way, like so. So we're going to pump all of our ores into here. Those are then going to get sent down into a minecart with chest. We'll go make that in a second. That is going to loop around, distributing all of the ores to the furnaces. And then down here, we're going to have another chest. I actually don't know, because I've not tested it. If I can put that chest here, that would be ideal, because the other chest is very far down in the ground and is a little bit of a pain to get to. 
but let me give that a try real quick. We'll start out by making uh, just two minecarts. We're then gonna upgrade one of those to a minecart with Hopper, which again, fairly easy for us to do. And we'll upgrade the other to a minecart with chest. Boom, nice. So if I were to put this one down here, what we're going to do is we're gonna swap this. Also real quick, let me put some kind of ore in one of these furnaces, just so there's something for our hopper to collect here. I'm just gonna put the one in for the time being, because I do kind of want to put all of the rest into the top chest to see if this system does work. So in here is one iron ingot. In here, we're gonna change this from cart full to no activity. That should pull the iron and unfortunately it looks like this doesn't work so we are going to instead place this down just under like that so this does work which is cool so now what we need to do is up here we're going to place down our minecart with chest again we're going to set this to no activity which basically means if there's nothing left to be transferred then it is going to emit a redstone signal which is exactly what we want and then in here we can place our iron ore that should get almost instantly sucked up into the chest and you'll see here that it does a very good job at evenly distributing the iron. It is gonna take a couple of laps to fully disperse all of the iron ore, but that's fine because these furnaces are not particularly fast and these burner drills are also not particularly fast either. So the ores are not gonna be coming in at such a speed that it's gonna matter that this takes a while. And for the time being, if it ever gets to the point where the ores are coming in too fast, we can just expand this out and add more furnaces and it should all be good. Now I am gonna go ahead and turn down my master volume here because the sound of these carts is a little abrasive, but this is like the basic idea of our system here. And because we have enough iron, I think one thing we can also look to do here is get ourselves five more hoppers, one, two, three, four, five. And those five hoppers are gonna go along the side, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm planning on setting up another little minecart here that distributes all of the eventually tiny coal to all of these furnaces and gets all of that working so this is pretty cool but as i mentioned before if we do want to get that up and running we are going to have to make some progress and that progress comes in the form of steel because i want to get the auto workbench the auto workbench here is going to allow us to automatically craft our coal into tiny coal which is ideal because again the ores are coming in so infrequently that if we don't auto craft our coal into tiny coal it's quite likely that we'll put one piece of coal in here it will be burned to smelt one iron ore and then no more iron ore will come in until after that coal has been smelted, which is not ideal. It's a pretty big waste of coal. And so to get to here, we first have to make steel. To get to steel, we have to do some more research because we need to go down into this tab, the purple tab, and we need to unlock the ability to make steel. For that, we need to get 16 logistics research. And to get 16 logistics research, we need 16 coal, 16 iron plates, and 16 conveyor belts. That shouldn't be a problem. 16 iron plates is a piece of cake. We've got the engineer's hammer, so we can just craft those down. That is completely fine. Now, in terms of conveyor belts, that really also shouldn't be too much of a problem. We do need more copper gears for that, but we have a bunch of copper ready to go. And so four, eight, 12, and 16, there are all of our conveyor belts, and of course, the coal we already have. And so now it's just a case of distributing these amongst the seven researchers that we have, which is a little bit awkward. I am going to go ahead and quickly upgrade to one more researcher, just because that is going to give us a lovely even number. And a lot of the research, by the way, is done in multiples of eight. So you'll see quite a few that cost eight, some that cost 16, uh, some that cost 32, and some that cost 64. I don't think any of them really cost like 23 or anything like that. I'm pretty sure that all of the research is a multiple of eight. And so having eight burner researchers, I think is the way to go here. So once again, we'll rotate that 90 degrees and we'll place that down right about here. And so now it's just a case of going around and putting two iron plates, two conveyor belts and two coal into each one of these burner researchers. And that should produce 16 logistics research fairly quickly. Real quick, whilst all of that research is processing, the Twitch chat has pointed out that we do have the Super Sound Muffler Revived mod in here. So we can make a sound muffler using a nut block, just redstone and uh, wood, with four wool. And uh, given that we have quite a bit of wood and we have a plethora of sheep around us, I think we should be able to get four wool fairly easily. And then I believe we can use that to um, muffle specific sounds. So 
Again, wrong place at the wrong time here, my friend. You are sacrifice number one. That is uh, is one more. To be fair, actually, we do have shears. So maybe he wasn't wrong place in the wrong time. Maybe I'm just um, a bad person. I am fairly certain that we did make shears. We did, and I actually have them on my hotbar of all things. That is completely fine. Uh, we do have a few more sheep around here. Let me go and uh, and shear this guy. Hopefully, that is two wool. It is indeed fantastic. And so we should now have everything we need. And I'm fairly certain that with the super sound muffler, we can place it down and then specify which sounds we want to muffle. So boom. And all I'm going to do is place that down right about here. Never mind. Um, for whatever reason, I've added both the uh, minecart riding and minecart inside. That doesn't seem to be having an effect. I'm not quite sure why. Either way, I will uh, look into that between episodes. Over here, we should have 16 logistics research ready to go. And so we should, in theory, be able to start working towards steel production now. So if we head back to the materials research and we hand in the 16 logistics research here, we get an engineer's manual. We get another blueprint for the blast furnace, which is going to make placing down many blast furnaces just that little bit easier. And more importantly, we now have actually unlocked the recipe for the blast furnace. So in order to make the blast furnace, we need blast brick. And thankfully, blast brick in this pack is once again fairly easy to make. The blast brick here is made by crafting coke brick with cobblestone. And the coke brick is made by crafting cobblestone around a regular stone. And so none of that is particularly difficult. All we need is a fair bit of stone and a fair bit of cobblestone. It does appear we've managed to burn through all of the cobblestone we had previously making furnaces. And so real quick, let me once again head on back down here and do just a little bit more cobblestone mining. Okay, so we've broken our hammer. So if we want to get another one, we are going to have to manually craft one. But either way, here we have some coke brick. Now we are going to need 27 coke brick, which we can just about do. And then from there, I think we should have enough cobblestone to upgrade that. Oh, no, we're not going to need 27 coke brick, but we need nine because you get three at a time. That's fine. We're almost certainly going to need more than one blast furnace. And so having that extra coke brick is going to be completely fine. To put this down, we can take our blast furnace blueprint and we can just left click with it. It's going to charge up using the blast brick. And then you can just right click to place this down. You can, of course, also do this manually if you just put down a three by three by three cube of blast brick and then right click the center with the engineer's hammer. Nice. We can then place some iron into there. Let's grab that out of here. And if I am not mistaken, the way this works, you can't put just any old regular fuel in here. So like tiny coal is not going to work. I don't think regular coal works either. Oh, never mind. It totally does. I thought I was going to have to use either charcoal or coal coke, but nope, it does look like the uh, regular coal does work indeed. We can use coal coke anyway because coal coke is more effective, but just for the time being, we are going to get one steel here from this uh, first bit of coal, and that is going to complete the quest here that gets us even more blank brick. Nice. We also get some slag as well, which is going to come in very useful for making clay momentarily. And you'll see that by creating the steel here, we have unlocked a bunch more quests. And I believe that's going to be a recurring theme in the pack here. As we complete more of these quests, we're going to move further and further and unlock even more quests going along. So now that we have steel, as I was just mentioning, the blast furnace takes charcoal and coal, which are all well and good, but there is a much better fuel, coal coke. Made in an immersive engineering coke oven multi-block, it can make two steel with just a single coke, and it's also kind of free as well. So if we take all of this out, let me quickly go ahead and smelt up at least one or two more stone here, just so that we can make some more coke brick. Actually, I'm going to, need to make three here, because if I do two... That's only going to get me 26 coke brick, and you need 27 in order to make a full coke oven. But the coke oven can basically turn regular coal into coal coke, and it does it for free. The only downside is that it is pretty slow. And it does appear that we are one cobblestone shy. That is completely fine. We don't actually need a hammer to mine the cobblestone. We can get one singular cobblestone using our pickaxe. And so back over here, let's do something like this, and then we can take this, and we don't have a capsule for it, but we can go ahead and just throw down a bunch of these, again, in a three by three by three multi-block fashion, making sure not to place them down incorrectly like that. Right click the center with the hammer, and boom, we have a coke oven. So now, in here we can place the coal, 
and angels here at the top there, this is going to process into cold coke. That cold coke we can then put into the blast furnace, and it's just a more efficient version of the regular coal. It basically just allows us to make our coal more efficient. Boom and boom. As we saw before in the quest book, one coal coat can do two steel, whereas one coal, I don't even think, can do one steel. So it is substantially more efficient than just using regular coal. But as I mentioned before, we are after the auto workbench. For that, we do have to do yet more research because the auto workbench is in processing and it's over here. So under the crafting tree, there is the auto workbench and the assembler. The auto workbench is the cheaper of the two. It just requires eight logistics research. And so we'll go ahead and craft the required items for that. Along with that, I would very much so like to get these traveler's boots mark one. These are going to allow us to just move faster generally, which I think is going to be very useful for us. We're going to do a lot of running around in this pack. Being able to move faster is going to be very helpful. And so the question is, can we get... 24 iron plates 24 conveyor belts and 24 coal i think we should be able to we are very close to breaking this engineer's hammer but it is not broken yet and so uh, let's go and do something like this each copper gear does get us four belts and so 4 8 12 16 20 24 should be perfect we'll craft those with 12 iron boom and then from there it's just a case of getting coal which we should have over in here but we don't because this has run out of fuel itself and so what we're probably going to have to do is take some of the tiny coal that we have i think ideally out of these furnaces is probably where we want to take it put that back in there and then i guess kind of just wait because we don't have enough coal to make this happen although what we might be able to do is actually get more burner drills though because these are not particularly difficult to make and getting more of those would allow us to start mining just that little bit faster the redstone engineering block easy enough and then for the burner drill component we just need four more copper gears we've got loads of copper we even have more in our furnaces up here and uh, boom look at that we have another burner drill this one i'm gonna put down right here it's gonna be a little awkward but if i do this we can then move this chest temporarily, shift right click here to make this the output, and then put the chest back. And now both of these drills should output to the same place. Speaking of drill, we do need to get yet another drill head. That is a lot of iron though for another drill head. Oofed. That isn't too big of a deal. We can temporarily go and steal one of the drill heads from another local drill. This one over here currently is just getting us redstone and diamonds, which are useful resources that we want to get in the long run, but especially in the early game, we don't need a staggering amount of redstone and diamonds, and we do need a staggering amount of coal, iron, and copper. So for the time being, I think that's going to be enough redstone and diamonds. Back over here, we can use this drill like so, and of course we can once again steal some tiny coal, drop that in, and now we should be producing coal twice as fast to the point where we can now take the 22 coal that we have and distribute that amongst all of these researchers to hopefully get us the 24 logistics research somewhat quickly. And not too long later, we now have three logistics research in every single one of these burner researchers. And so we should now have enough research to unlock the auto workbench as well as the fast boots. And we actually just get given these boots, which is very nice indeed. Boom, and now we just have a little bit of speed to allow us to move around just a little bit faster. And as we progress through the pack, we can unlock faster and faster boots to allow us to walk even faster going forward. But let's see, do we have what it takes to make the auto workbench? The answer is no at the moment, but it doesn't look too difficult to make. So we do have to get a crafting table and then we do need two steel gears. For two steel gears, I assume we're going to need at least eight steel. That is exactly what we need. Thankfully, we've got a bunch of coal cog now, and so we'll drop all of that into the blast furnace, like so. I'm not going to put too much in here because I don't want to turn all of our iron into steel. One problem that we are going to run into is the problem of creosote oil here. You'll see that when the coke oven fills up with creosote, it doesn't work. It stops working completely. So we are going to have to find a way to get that creosote out of the coke oven. There are a few options for that. One of them does include a big old tank that we can make that's going to allow us to store it all. That's this one here. Um, I think we have a few options. There is the portable tank that we will get 
as soon as you make one treated wood. And so one thing that we could do here is take a regular bucket, place that in the blue slot here to get creosote. And then I think if we craft eight planks around that bucket of creosote, that should give us eight creosote planks, aka treated wood planks. It does indeed. And then from there, that's going to give us a portable tank and three pumps. So these are, I guess, oh, I can't pick them up because I don't know about them. Interesting. That is not ideal. I didn't know that's how that worked. So we've not unlocked those yet from a research standpoint. My question now is, can I do a little cheesy, like, can I try and get these into a hopper so that they don't despawn? If I put this here, if I... Yes, okay, perfect, right. <laughs> that does work, that's fantastic. Let me put those in the chest for now because we can't use them. I guess we can't pick them up, but we can grab them out of a chest. And then I assume, oh no, I can't get them out of a chest. Okay, hold on, let me do that again. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe I can pick them up, but I just can't have them in my hand. So if I put, things on my hotbar, that works. Okay, cool, that is good to know. So if you get an item that you can't pick up, you can pick it up, you just can't be holding it. Okay, fine. So um, I was hoping that we'd be able to use that before we unlocked it, but again, under uh, transfer, there is a quest here for the uh, fluid pump. And so uh, once we have that, we can use that to automatically pump fluid out of the coke oven. For the time being though, we do have this portable tank that can hold 20 buckets worth of any liquid. And uh, one thing you can do is just put this in the blue slot here and that will keep filling up on creosote until it's full and then it'll start backing up in this tank here. And the uh, even cooler thing is that I'm pretty sure that we can use this as a bucket. So just like we crafted the eight planks around a bucket before, this has 12 buckets worth of creosote in it. If I do this, we can make eight more planks and now it's got 11 buckets in it. And so in theory here, we can kind of keep emptying out the creosote if we have enough wood to craft into treated wood, if that makes sense. Um, over here, we do now have enough steel to make two steel gears. And so I am fairly certain that we do now have everything we need to make the auto workbench, which is a pretty nifty little device that uh, we can use to auto craft coal. So we are gonna take our coal from here and we're gonna put it in here. So at the top, you specify what recipe you want to use. So you just put in the items for that recipe and it will allocate slots to the bottom here accordingly. And so now, if ever I put coal into here, it is going to somewhat slowly, but without any fuel whatsoever, craft that one piece of coal into nine tiny coal. And we can use that for a couple of different things. We do of course want that tiny coal going into our furnaces here to fuel our smelting, but ideally, we first and foremost want that tiny coal going back into the burner drills here to allow us to keep burning and keep getting more coal because without these burner drills, we're not gonna get any more coal. And so ideally, that's the first place that we want all of this to go. So let me take down these furnaces here because this is all getting a bit cramped. And let's see if we can't set up some kind of system to get the tiny coal into these burner drills. Okay, so mistakes were made. The Twitch chat told me that I could burn creosote as a fuel source, which it turns out is true, but if you put a tank that has creosote in it into the burner drill, it will just delete the tank, like it will eat the tank up. I don't think that's a huge problem. I'm fairly certain this tank is somewhat cheap to make. It is, it's two redstone, one iron, and then uh, some glass. The glass we don't currently have, but um, I do believe that we can probably turn our cobble into gravel, gravel into sand, utilizing the uh, the hammer. So we should be able to get another tank fairly easily. Just an FYI though, you can't, um, like it, it's, it's gonna last a while. It's got 11,600 fuel in there. So that is gonna last a lot longer than the tiny coal does, but it does burn the tank as well, which is not the best situation. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna move both of my burner drills. I'm leaving this one here for now because it's got um, quite a bit of fuel still to burn through, and so I don't wanna waste the, the tank that we just burned. But what I'm thinking is here, I've moved this burner drill. It's still within the same chunk that it was before, but now it's hopper here, which is just gonna feed into the, uh, the burner drill. Uh, you can feed into the top like this. That fuel will make its way into the drill. But now what we can do is we can just run the cart that we were going to run previously for fuel anyway to all of these furnaces, and we can have it also go to the burner drills as well. So the burner drills are also gonna get fuel along with these 
hoppers. One thing we probably want to do is maybe fill these hoppers with other stuff. If I do this, that's going to prevent one hopper from filling up with too much tiny coal, which I think is a good idea. I don't think it's going to be a massive problem for us because the tiny coal is coming in in such small quantities and very slowly thanks to the auto workbench but uh, if we do that it's going to stop any one of these hoppers filling up with you know five stacks of tiny coal which is not what we want and so what we're going to do is we're going to have of course a chest down right in the middle and uh, again for now let's grab a new one because i want to leave this one here to get the maximum usage out of our tank that we burned and essentially what we want to do here is we want to extract from this chest and then i think we're going to utilize this guy the item router for the item router we need a iron mechanical component which does require four more iron plates that might see the end of our hammer it didn't but it's still very close to being destroyed that is completely fine and boom we have everything it takes to make the item router uh, it does require treated wooden planks which thankfully we do now have and the idea here is that we're going to extract from this chest. To extract from the chest, we are going to need a different kind of conveyor belt, specifically the extracting conveyor belt. And for that, we are, of course, going to need first just more conveyor belts in general. So let's go make a few more of those. And then if we make yet another hopper, we should be able to upgrade that into an extracting conveyor belt. And that's going to go down right about here, like that. And so this is going to extract from here. So if I put coal into here, that is gonna get extracted. And if we're not too close, it should go to the item router. Now, right now the item router isn't going anywhere, but that is completely fine. We're gonna change that right now. So let me go ahead and make this into an actual loop. So let's do something a little bit like this, and then let's put down all of the connecting tricks. And of course, we're gonna get yet another one, you guessed it, of those signal hoppers to transfer items into another minecart with chest boom there's our cart hopper and again this one is gonna go potentially on here so let's put that down let's say right about there and so we need to get all of our coal up and into this chest to do that what we can do is we can invest in yet another form of belt, that being uh, the vertical conveyor belt. Let's get six of those. We might need more than six. Actually, no, six should be fine. And uh, with that, if we do something like this, I don't know actually if that's gonna put the item into the chest. Let me give that a try. It didn't, unfortunately. So what I might do then in that scenario is move this back by one. The belts, thankfully, don't have to have blocks like underneath them in order for them to work, unlike the, uh, the rails, which uh, do require blocks underneath them. And so what we can do is we can just have one belt that pumps right into here, like that. And then from there, we are gonna have to temporarily place down blocks to place down the vertical belts. But once the vertical belts are down, we can then get rid of those blocks. And so we'll do something like this, 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 and this. We can then get rid of the marble inside of there. And now if I drop down an iron, that iron should make its way up and should go into the chest as demonstrated like that so now the idea with the router is that in here you can designate where you want things to go so the left side here is blue and the right side here is red so in here we're going to say that coal is going to go to the blue side and we're going to say that iron ore is going to go to the red side now actually i might change that i might have coal go to the yellow side because of course one thing we do have to do here is we have to have our coal first go to the auto workbench in the auto workbench we're going to set it to coal like that and so now if any coal comes into this chest it gets extracted by the extracting conveyor belt and then the item router sends it into the auto workbench the auto workbench then begins turning it into tiny coal and then that tiny coal is going to get extracted you guessed it using yet another one of these extracting conveyor belts that is going to go down right about here. And then from there, we just need to somewhat haphazardly send that around to the upward facing conveyor belt. And so now if I drop these down onto the belt like this, those should go up around, get sent all the way up and should end up inside of the chest. Nice. Okay, cool. And that is basically the whole idea here. We're going to take another powered rail. That powered rail is going to go right 
here like that. We're going to set this, of course, to no activity, which it is by default. And then back over here, we have just enough iron to make another minecart with chest. We do, of course, need one more chest for that to happen. Let's do something like this, and we'll put that down right about here. And now that's going to take all of the tiny coal, and it should start distributing that tiny coal amongst all of the furnaces, but also amongst the burner drill as well. And so... I'm pretty sure this system is almost good to go. The only final thing we have to do that's going to be somewhat tricky because it requires a lot of conveyor belts is um, we need to take the iron ore and send it to the right place. And unfortunately, it looks like the way I've done this, it is not going to work like that because I think what's happening here is that this belt is... Oh, no, wait. The iron is going to the blue side, which is not right. I think that's mostly just because it can't go to the red side. If I put this here... Any iron ore should go... Yes, there we go, to the red side. Okay, cool. So uh, let me go ahead and take the iron out of that cart if I can. Because it shouldn't be in there. All the iron you'll see is coming out this side. We need to uh, just divert that iron ore up to there, which is going to require a few more conveyor belts than what we currently have. And so let me quickly do a little bit more smelting and a lot more belting. Thankfully, we had 58 iron in our little processing chest down here from our processing earlier. And so now we should be able to very easily get ourselves a bunch more copper gears, upgrade those into a bunch more conveyor belts, and I guess ideally also upgrade some of those into vertical belts as well, because we do need to go all the way up to that chest. You don't have to use the vertical belts, by the way, as we showed previously, you can have these go diagonally upwards and that would work as well. It's just a bit more space saving, I think, to use the vertical conveyor belts instead of the uh, diagonal ones. All right, so this should be perfect. That should take all of the iron ore. And you know what? Let's test it. Let's drop the iron ore into here. That's going to pull it all out one at a time around. And the iron ore is going up to where it needs to go. The tiny coal is going where it needs to go. And again, we can get rid of this marble here. It is no longer necessary to keep these belts afloat. And so all of the iron ends up in this chest. The minecart takes it out, distributes it amongst the furnaces. It gets smelted. Then the minecart with hopper pulls it out and sends it down into here. All of the coal is also going to where it needs to go. Let me pick up all of that uh, marble there. That doesn't need to be where it currently is. And I think that this system should be self-sustaining. The amount of tiny coal inside of the burner drill is going up. The only potential problem that we could run into is, I think, if this chest here fills up with tiny coal, which I think is a possibility. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see how it goes. I did manually put some coal into here from this chest here, so we'll have to see if this drill is producing enough coal to run both itself and the furnaces. I think it probably is, and if we do end up backing up on coal, we could look at either getting a bigger chest or potentially getting something like a storage door, which we could then upgrade and uh, potentially void any excess tiny coal if that ever became an issue. But yeah, I think this is working pretty well. And because this is so slow, I think we're always going to be able to come and grab a little bit of coal out of here if we ever want to use some, for example, for making more research, which is definitely something that we're going to want to do in the future. But I like this. This is good. We've got iron automated. Really, all that we need to do if we want to bring copper into the mix is set up another minecart system, just like we did with the redstone and diamonds, to bring all of the copper ore closer to here. And if we just dump that copper ore into this chest, like if we have the minecart drop it off in this chest, we can then add copper ore to the uh, north facing filter and that copper ore will just get added to the same chest as the iron ore and then we'll get processed in exactly the same way and so yeah going forward we can expand out with more furnaces to add more capacity and smelt things faster if that's something that we feel is necessary and of course we can add in new ores as and when we unlock them which is i think something that we're going to do more and more as we progress because one of the upcoming things that we're going to unlock is a tier two drill head the steel drill head which is going to unlock for us tin lead silver nickel gold and nether quartz the nether quartz in particular i think is going to be particularly useful for us because the signal mod adds a bunch of extra cool stuff like the cart engine and like the uh, stations here that require nether quartz and so once we get those, we can begin to make a much more advanced system that uh, isn't just kind of a regular vanilla minecart system. We can really start to make things a lot more advanced than they currently are. And we can use those logistics to help us push our automation forward as things get more and more advanced 
throughout the pack. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Feed the Factory there. 